Nevada State Supreme Court, they've ordered Nye County to stop the unprecedented hand count of mail-in ballots today. The American Civil Liberties Union of Nevada filed an emergency 20-page court request to stop vote counting. The court filing accused Nye County of violating Supreme Court rules that prevent the public release of early voting results. Onlookers witnessed the vote tallies, call out mismatched voting tallies, and it took nearly three hours to count only 50 ballots. Nye is the most well-known county to switch the vote counting process in response to election fraud conspiracy theories. The change could significantly impact the election outcome as Nevada is one of the key U.S. Senate races. This right here, Reese, is the concern we've been talking about where you've had these election deniers who have been taking over county positions and they're running for state office. These folks want to impact the election. How in the hell does it take three hours to count 50 ballots? Uh, this is the kind of freak show that we've been talking about that we should be trying to avoid uh, come November. And if these people are elected, if these MAGA folks are elected to various offices, it's going to get worse in 2024. Absolutely. I mean, this is basically chaos. You had several groups tally five, 50 votes in three hours and they had different answers. This is why voting machines work and hand tallies are really supposed to be used in rare circumstances um, because people are fallible. Um, and so I just think it's a shame that they have really given in to the election deniers and conspiracy theorists. And be clear, this is a very heavily Republican district. And so they're really inflicting more pain on themselves than anything. But I think that the extra unprecedented part about this is essentially releasing Who's has a, who has a certain amount of votes before Election Day? So basically, you, you're telling people um, how many votes to go for a particular candidate. And so this is just ridiculous. But when you have hundreds of election deniers running throughout the country, whether they're running for secretary of state, running for governor, running for Congress, this is just the beginning. And the fact that the Supreme Court is chomping at the bit to take away federal protections and federal standards for elections. This is what's at stake in 2022. Perhaps, hopefully not, if people vote the right way and, and take this seriously, but perhaps one of our last free-ish, fair-ish elections we might see in this country before it all comes crumbling down, I think, as Dr. Carr would talk about. Erica, <laughs> Erica, Erica, again, I don't think people understand how these crazy individuals are trying to impact these elections. I mean, we're talking about uh, people who are running all across this country. And look, Steve Bannon and others, they've made it clear their goal is to take over the election process. He is on record as saying every vote should not be counted. They want to be able to throw out thousands of ballots. They want to ensure that Donald Trump and his MAGA uh, idiots win. Absolutely, Roland, which is why the last thing I said is, uh, are we going to be experiencing the next president that's going to be elected or installed? Remember, Steve Bannon said right there in the state of Maryland at the CPAC convention in February of 2017 that the goal of that regime was to deconstruct the administrative state. And Teresi's point is all about sowing chaos. And so we know how Steve uh, Bannon has um, tethered himself to um, folks in our communities to ensure that those disruptors, those chaos agents are spreading messages of disinformation and misinformation. So, you know, Republicans do wild things, but they know that they're actually going to run and hold the news cycle. And because they lean more towards authoritarianism and one think kind of um, mindset, that if the uh, top person is saying that, listen, that election that took place when folks came out and voted 2020, that that election was not valid. Then here we are dealing with years later, folks running around saying that, yeah, 2020 wasn't valid and we still have a bone to pick. So I think that, you know, as we talk about folks voting and engaging the vote here in the States, you know, to be very clear, you know, whatever freedoms, quote unquote, that we are experiencing, do you still want to experience those freedoms of being able to freely log into a social media account? You, there's mm -hmm. no, uh, we have some idea of what Republicans plan to unleash because of conversations leaked and things that we're reading throughout um, uh, articles and things of that nature. But the extent of what they are willing to do, um, there's still yet um, some to be unfolded. But history has taught us um, who they are and what exactly they want. And, and they want everyone else's freedom. So I think that this is 
really should be another reason for people to really ensure that they are engaged in this and every vote that they have within their state. All right, folks, back to that Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. This is our time, our moment to move forward beyond the gun violence, the hospital closures, the unaffordable housing, Brian Kemp's Georgia for the wealthiest few. Stacey Abrams is looking out for every Georgian. She'll invest our $6 billion surplus in the fundamentals, education, healthcare, housing, and a good living. Putting more money in your pocket to build one Georgia where everyone has the freedom to thrive. Folks, Black Star Network is here. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Thank <laughs> you.